Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the program. My name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate. We are on a mission to help California's renters become homeowners. This is our five minute first time home buyer market update for Southern California. So, by Southern California, we mean Orange and LA counties where we run our statistics. A couple of you have noticed that on these uh, videos that I normally wear t shirts instead of button up shirts, like I do in my whole market update. Um, and a couple of you asked me privately because apparently they want to see what the t-shirts say. So I'll actually, uh, don't be shy. If you want to ask in the comments, I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, this one says, uh, relish today. And then the bottom here, it says catch up tomorrow. <laughs> um, maybe I'll make that a thing. Maybe I'll start uh, doing different t-shirts every week. Anyhow, I want to talk before we start something about timing. And so people understand sort of how things work in the real estate field, because I don't think we've ever really talked about this. And I think this is really good to understand and why you have to be very careful when you look at statistics and what those statistics about the market actually mean. So the first thing to understand is probably the most basic principle. And I know I've said this before on this podcast or on, this, on these videos. Um, when you see that a home sold, like for example, you find out, you look at a comps and there's a home that just sold in a neighborhood that you want to buy in, right? Well, that home that just sold is really the result of negotiations and signing a contract 30 to 45 days ago. So by the time you see that sold price number, let's say it's 650,000, um, in a fast moving market, the prices in that neighborhood may not be $650,000 anymore because this was the result of negotiating 30 to 45 days ago, which, in, which is in a tight real estate market, that, that's an eternity. That means almost all the inventory has actually moved over. Everything that came on the market is an escrow almost from now until then. So, you know, you have to understand that. The other thing to understand about timing is when you look at these statistics for availability, you have to understand that there's a certain rhythm to things in a very tight inventory constrained market. And by inventory constrained, I mean, there are more buyers out there looking than there are houses available. And I firmly believe that's true right now. We are still in an inventory constrained market. What you have to understand is if you see a spike, for example, in new homes coming to the market, right? So like, let's say this week, we see that the number of new listings went up. Well, that, what's that going to do? That's going to result in, for example, next week's new escrows being higher, right? Because there's about a week delay. If a house goes in the market, people have to look at it, they write offers, they negotiate, and then it goes into escrow. That's how it works. The other thing that's important to understand is when you're trying to predict where prices are going on sort of a microscopic level. And what we're seeing right now is that prices are actually changing week to week to some degree. And at first I thought this might be noise in the data, but I don't think it is. I think what's happening is, you know, when there's a week that not a lot of new listings come in the market and we see that level of inventory supply fall, the next week prices jump a little bit because people start to panic that they're not going to get something. So you have to understand and kind of look at these statistics. So if this week, if this week you see that our absorption rate went up, it means that next week you might see a little bit more competition. Now, if there's a week where absorption goes down, you might say that next week will bring less competition when you're bidding on houses. Anyhow, just a little bit of a preface there to kind of understand what's happening on sort of a more microscopic level. Let's sort of jump into our slides. We're gonna again talk about both affordability and the availability of housing, how much housing is out there and available. So without further ado, let me bring up our charts here. Our first one is home price, right? And this actually shows closing. So remember what I just said, this data is a little bit old, but I think what you see here is if you look starting in August on single family, on our entry level single family homes, sort of a gentle rise, not huge, right? But kind of general and kind of some stagnation last month. We did have a little bit of a bump. My guess is that you are going to see in the next 30 days, these numbers will go up because that's what we're feeling out there in the market. What's interesting though, and I always love to point this out, um, is when you compare this to condos, this condo market actually looks, you know, a little bit flatter, right? And it doesn't move around quite as much. Uh, the other thing too, is just as a reminder, these are entry level homes. So what we do is we take all of the three bedroom, two bath, single family homes, and we look at the 
at the 25% level. So that means not the most expensive, not the cheapest, not even midway, but midway between the cheapest and the 50% mark or the half as expensive. So we're kind of looking at those entry level houses and we do the same thing in our condo statistics. Um, as far as I know, I think we're the only people that are, that are kind of doing these stats on this sort of entry level market. If you look here at our, at our entry level, at our total monthly payment based on 5% down, um, I think this is where the news actually gets, you know, a lot better for you if you're a first time home buyer. You know, if you look here, we are still below the payment level that we were at by almost $50 over two years ago. So when people tell me, you know, we're getting ready, there's gonna have to be a price correction on houses. I'd be like, it's already happened. Houses, houses are cheaper than they were two years ago. And in fact, if you look at our condo market, wow, look at this. We were at 2,900 and as of October 23rd, uh, you know, we are under 2,700. That is almost a 10% decline. So for those people that are saying, you know, housing has to come down in price, I would actually argue that's already happened. You know, it's been two years, we've had in some inflation, and yet there's been no inflation in prices. And in some cases, the prices have actually dropped. Um, so I, I think on the affordability front, people are still doing well, but the consequence is that we just have an incredibly competitive market out there. Now, if we take a step back, now we're gonna talk about the availability of housing. And I think for most of you, this is probably where you are, right? This is, this is the area you're most concerned about. And the question that everybody has is, is it going to get better between now and the end of the year? And if you asked me two weeks ago, um, I would have said with a resounding yes, but I put in here, and this wasn't clickbait, it looks like fall outside, it smells like fall, the temperatures are cooling down, our market is not acting like fall at all. By the way, this is our household income graph. Again, just to summarize on the affordability, you are under $100,000 for minimal household required for our entry level single family. And you are also under $65,000 on our two bedroom, two bath condo scenario as well. So looking at our absorption rate, um, this is a graph that I like. In my absorption rate graphs, we base these on pending sales because I think that is the most up-to-date information that's out there, right? I know some people use sold homes, but unfortunately that is comparing today's new listings with a month ago's sales. That doesn't really, it's not really a very good match, I don't think. So if you look at this chart, I think there's a couple things to talk about here. Number one is notice that consistently you're going to have an easier time in the condo market than you are in the single family market. Um, and while there might be exceptions to that rule in certain communities or certain buildings people wanna be in, by and large, on average, if you're an entry level single family home buyer, it is harder for you to get in than if you are an entry level condo buyer. What else I think is interesting about this chart is to really sort of plot and look at how much these absorption rates change. Remember the absorption rate is sort of a, a budget way of looking at supply and demand and that relationship. And you'll see that two weeks ago, we had a bit of a lull here in the single family. It dropped to 74%, which is still a seller's market, but you know a lot more closely matched. But then we jumped to 91. And while it eased up a little bit in the last week, 3% is not that much easing up. Anytime you're in this 90% realm, you're in a hyper-competitive inventory constrained market, meaning there are way more people out there looking for houses than there are houses available. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like if this keeps up too much, we will have to see a price bump to kind of ease this. I think something that, uh, let me go off screen share for a second. I think something that everybody is wondering is, are we going to see a holiday slowdown? Were we going to see an election slowdown, which I thought we would, and we did not. You know, we're just not seeing either new listings or buyers drop off. I think a lot of buyers are finally tuning into a message that I've been sort of saying for a while is that, Interest rates are low until one day they aren't and they start going up. And, you know, I think people universally seem caught by surprise when that happens. But the fact is we are at a point of extraordinarily low interest rates. It will not exist forever. I think there's a lot of inflation pressures going on. And, you know, I think it's only a matter of time before that happens. I can't give you a timeline, but it will happen one day. So, you know, for sitting on the fence, don't. Um, you know, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is 
uh, if we go back to this chart on our, on our sort of weeks of availability, the other thing that I think is really important, if we look at our weeks of supply, you know, we kind of notice a diverging trend. Condos have always been better, right? There's always been twice as much supply, but we're approaching a point where now it's more like two and a half times as much supply. And if you look, we had in that week where the absorption rate was low, look at our supply, that spike. Now we're right back down to 3.6 weeks of supply of single family homes. That is just very little supply at all. Um, that would obviously that means, of course, that if no new homes came on the market, we would be out of houses within three and a half weeks to sell. I think if you look at this chart, you know, this is both of these are competitive, but the condo is less so. And, you know, I put in here in the description, you know, do I do I think things are going to ease up at all? And, and I kind of started to go into this. I don't want to give you a prediction that's, that's based just on basically a guesstimate. But the reality is this year has not followed a lot of the same rules that we've seen. Um, we've remained strong in the fall. I don't see any reason why suddenly buyers are going to disappear, right? Uh, typically in California, our slowest time is the period of time between Thanksgiving and New Year's. We might get a little bit of a reprieve then because people don't like to move during that time period. But if we do, I think it's going to be fairly minimal. I think as long as interest rates stay where they are, this is the market that we are going to be in. So, you know, if you're the kind of buyers waiting for things to get better, um, I think by the time things get better, interest rates will be higher and you may find that your purchasing power is actually reduced, meaning your real cost of buying a house goes up. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. We love your questions and comments. Keep them coming. Also, if you have not liked and subscribed and hit that notification bell and you're watching on YouTube, please do that. Um, also, we do a whole market update for the same market area in Southern California, where we go into a bit more detail. That actually comes out on Mondays, so be sure to take a look out for that as well, and we will see you next week.